you explain a red herring in the story? Sure. I mean, a red herring is like something you use to uh, divert attention or make you think um, that something is important. Usually it's related to a twist. You'll have a red herring to make the audience look here and then the twist is somewhere else. So in the, you know, in the story I was talking about where there's this double agent and no one knows who the assassin is, you know, I certainly presented several characters that could have been you know, the assassin where you know, he has this one friend that's always tagging along and there's a Chinese uh, you know, state security agent that's following them and, and you know, it kind of seems to know a little bit more than you'd think he would know and so you, know, you wanna give the audience a couple different you know, possibilities when you're, if you're gonna pull off a twist or someone isn't gonna be what they're, or if there's a secret you know, that's going to be revealed, you, a red herring can kind of be like, well, is it this or is it this or is it this? And that's good because then we like to try to figure that out. I think so. I mean, I think you like to try to, I I don't think every twist needs one, but if you can do it and make it effective and make it not obvious, then I think it can be a a cool technique to use. You know, it's funny, like I I feel, I find a lot of, uh, a lot of these sort of terms, you know, for me, I don't know, a lot of it's sort of instinctual. Like I have a hard time saying like, oh, I use this technique or I employed this red herring, you know, it's more like, I don't know, I just feel like I'm kind of drawing on all the stories and movies I've seen and okay, that's how they did it, how would I do it, you know, and, and it's kind of more, much more internalized for me. How do you fool the reader or do you not fool them and you <laughs> let them have the ultimate bird's eye view of the story? Um, hmm. I think that, uh, I've only tried to fool the reader a few times and I don't know, I think, well, first of all, I think you're never gonna fool all the readers, you know, I mean, unless you just really pull something out of the blue. Um, And when I tried to do it, some people liked it, other people didn't, you know, I mean, so for, in the second book, there's a, uh, a character, Kane is going to China to protect somebody and they know that there is an assassin after this person, but nobody knows anything about the assassin. They don't know what they look like. They don't know if they're male or female. They don't know. They just know that they go by this code name of Red Phoenix. That's the only thing they know. And so there's a character who's introduced and uh, hmm, it's tough to talk about because I don't want to give it away. Sure, sure. Basically the, the gender of a character, you know, I didn't want to say if the assassin was a male or a female. And so I used the, the word they quite a bit, the the genderless singular they, which, you know, technically is correct English, but it's unusual. You don't come across it very often. And so I did get a lot of readers commenting that, hey, you made a mistake. You kept using a plural and it's just one person in this fight. I was like, no. I mean, I got a lot of emails about that. So I sort of regret, you know, doing that. But other people were like, wow, I was so surprised when it was revealed, you know, who the killer was. So I, I, you know, I think you just gotta, you do your best. You decide, I think it's important to decide like, why are you trying to fool the reader? Is it important to the story or are you just trying to manufacture some sort of surprise, you know? Cause I, I mean, for the most part, I don't really think, I think it's better to deliver something in a satisfying way than to just be surprising, you know? So I would rather, in that case, it was important to the story, you know, like who the assassin was and why they were doing what they were doing and the surprise mattered. But in, I haven't tried to do it again. And for the most part, I don't, I think unless you've got a really good reason for doing it, like there's not a huge, uh, there's not as big a payoff as you might think. Is there a right way to open the story or a wrong way? I mean, I don't, I'd hesitate to say there's a wrong way or a right way, but I do think, I think in general, you know, your best bet is to always begin as far into the action as you can, you know, without making it confusing for the audience, you know. So, I mean, if if five or six things happen to get you to the point where the story begins, I don't, you don't always need to see all those things happen. You can just have a character say, like, these things happened and now we're in this situation and we have to send someone here, you know. I mean, I think you want to try to cut to the chase as quickly as you can, but but I don't think there's like an absolute rule on where that is, you know, or, I mean, I think you just need to go with your gut and, and go, also I think you need to go with like what is important to you telling the story. Um, in the third book, which is set in Sudan, I'd start with uh, this character walking uh, from a, you know, from one village to another because I really wanted to sort of get across the conditions, you know, that these people are living under. It's a, they're in a war-torn region. 
They can be literally killed at any second. I mean, they've had, you know, they're the, the newest nation on the planet and one of the poorest. And, you know, I, I kind of just wanted to show what that would really be like, you know, and this guy like walking past these obliterated buildings and, you know, delivering like, you know, little meager scraps of food that he was able to buy, like rotten fruit at a market and stuff like that, you know, to, to families and things like that. So it wasn't necessarily the most sort of exciting action-packed opening, although it does go on to end with an attack on the village. So it does end with action. But it was maybe a slower buildup, but I thought it was important to get across what life was like here because it kind of colors what happens in the story later. So to me, that made sense. You know, I, I think, uh, yeah, it's hard. I think you just have to kind of go, you just have to sort of trust in yourself and, and what is important to you and what's interesting to you and try to look at it from a reader and make sure that it's going to be interesting to them too and, and do your best. Have you visited all of the countries? No, <laughs> I've certainly okay. never been to Sudan okay. or Siberia. Um, but, you know, I've done a fair bit of traveling in Asia. And so certainly for the first... Uh, two books I was able to mostly you know pull from my own experiences how do we risk insulting the reader well I guess I mean every reader is different right so those things you just mentioned I don't think I would find insulting I think I kind of find the opposite insulting if you like have to explain like every little thing to the point that it's kind of pedantic also, I think things that aren't satisfying are sort of insulting in the sense of like, if it's a Mary Sue character and I never feel they're in any jeopardy, you know, why am I wasting my time with this? Or a twist that feels unearned or that when I think about it, I'm like, that doesn't really make any sense. You know, that's sort of insulting. But every reader is different. And I mean, I've had some readers comment favorably and negatively on things that I wouldn't even have occurred to me, you know, just very sort of extraneous strange things. I think if you just do your best to tell a good story, I don't think you're in danger of insulting the readers that you're not going to insult anyway. Because I think inevitably, when you put out a creative work, some people are not going to like it and some people are going to love it. And that's just the way it is. So I wouldn't worry too much about insulting the reader. As long as you're being true to the story and doing your best, I think that's all you can do. But if there was a risk of insulting, it would be over-explaining. For me, mm -hmm. but I don't think everyone's like, you know, everyone's different. I mean, so you may, you may get someone else who says, I didn't understand what was going on. Like, you know, I, I think it's, an I just don't think you can, there's no blanket level that's going to work for everybody, you know? So you just have to do what feels right to you. Uh, I don't personally enjoy uh, Tom Clancy books because they're so detailed with the, you know, the technical information. I, you know, I, I read Hunt for Red October, and I mean, it's like a manual on how a, a submarine works. His readers clearly love that. You know, that's what draws them to it, and that's great. It just isn't what I like. You know? so, whereas some people love the action scenes in my books and call them cinematic, other people find them unrealistic or, you know, or, or unbelievable. So I, I think I just wouldn't worry about it too much. I mean, I, I really don't think you can you just don't know how people are going to react to your stuff. I think the most important thing is tell a good story.